I'm going to tell you a story about a guy named Dwayne. Dwayne was a pastor in Texas and called by God and a great Bible teacher and a Bible preacher. And there was one weekend he got sick and he caught a flu. Like sometimes we catch a little, just an average flu, flu virus. Well, he got up to preach that morning and as he did every week and he preached the first service, they had two services on Sunday morning and he wasn't feeling that great. His voice was a little bit kind of feeling rough, but he preached and then he went ahead and preached the second service and was feeling a little bit worse. They had an evening service that night and he told the, the leaders, he said, I just, I can't preach tonight. I'm just, my voice is just gone and I don't, I don't know what's going on. And well, what ended up happening was he, this flu virus attacked his vocal cords. It was a very unusual thing. The doctors couldn't even quite figure it out. It, it, it damaged the nerve tissue of his vocal cords beyond repair. Over the next three years, he went to 63 specialists and their teams, over 200 doctors, as they tried to diagnose him and treat him. His voice, he said, it it felt like the worst case of laryngitis. He said, it felt like somebody choking you, like just pressing up against your vocal cords, like this nonstop pressure against your throat. A year after he was experienced this flu virus, he had to step down from his church. And that's what he felt called to do. I mean, as you know, as a pastor, our voice is kind of important, right? I only do two or three things, and one of which is preach. And I cast vision, and I lead. I preach, lead, and cast vision as the shepherd. And you need a voice. It helps. He didn't have a voice. So after a year, on his own willingness, he said, I, 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 this church needs to find a new pastor. I just, I, I don't know what's going on. He was devastated. His family moved down to Houston. His wife got a job because it, it took him a while to figure out what to do. His whole life he'd been trained for ministry and prepared for ministry. And, and now he, he can't do that. doesn't even have a voice. can't even talk. He did eventually find a job, but just went through some struggles, depression, discouragement. You can imagine. Pastors are human just like you. Yeah. Finally, they, they got, became a part of this large church in Houston, Texas, a large Baptist church. And there was one Sunday that the, the Sunday school teacher, the Bible study teacher, w- wasn't uh, able to go because he was sick. He wasn't able to teach. So they, they asked Dwayne. Of course, they, they knew that he was discouraged and maybe thought maybe they could... You know, it would be encouragement to have him teach. And so they asked him to be the substitute teacher. And he's like, I, I can't, I can't teach. I mean, the, the, you don't, you don't want to listen to this voice. And so they hooked him up with this microphone, the special microphone where, where they could, you could just barely hear what he was saying and, and understand it just a little bit. And that Sunday, as he was teaching in a Southern Baptist church, in Houston, Texas. It was the only Bible study class on the enti- in the entire church that actually would, would audio tape the lesson. Because with, with it being a large class of over 150 people, there might be one or two that weren't there. So they would, make, they would tape it and then give it to people who were, who were absent or who weren't there. Have two or three tapes laying on the table each week for people who maybe missed the previous week. So they record it. It just so happened... That the lesson that was lined up, this curriculum that was lined up, even by the denomination, it came on Psalm 103. He begins to teach. And, of course, he, he's trying to explain the fact that, that God doesn't heal all the time. Of course, here he is with this voice. And so he's, he's saying, you know, God forgives all our sins, but he doesn't always heal our diseases. And I want you to listen to this audio tape. Pastor Dwayne Miller. So when the psalmist writes, and he heals all of my diseases, let me say to you that I believe God still heals. That hasn't ended. That is not over. Now you have to be careful on how you do this. Because there are folks who carry things to an excess, and it becomes a show. And God has never intended that that be what it is. God heals in his sovereign will. I don't know why. God does things 
that he does, but I know that he does. And the only thing he requires of me is to allow him to be God and me to be me and let it be. To say that every single person will always be healed because Jesus died on the cross is a misinterpretation of scripture. Not true. Won't work. Isaiah 53 doesn't talk about physical healing. I'm sorry. That's just not the context. And to impress that there causes a misinterpretation of scripture. That's wrong. On the other hand, to say that, since we don't have anything after the book of Acts, that miracles ended at the book of Acts and they never happen again, is equally as wrong. Because you have put God in a box both ways. And he doesn't want to be in the box. So, the psalmist says, I'm excited, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. One of his benefits is he heals all of my diseases. And then in verse 4 he says, and he redeems my life from the pit. Now, I like that verse just a whole lot. I have had, and you have had in times past, pit experiences. We've both had, we've all had times when our life seemed to be in a pit, in a grave. And we didn't have an answer for the pit we find ourselves in. And I don't understand this right now. I'm but overwhelmed at the moment I'm not quite sure what to say or do <laughs> I'm uh, Sounds funny to say a loss for words. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I He redeems my life from the pit. <laughs> and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is abounding in love. The Lord will not accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, that's mercy. Or repay us according to our iniquities, that's mercy. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Wow. He said, whenever he said the word pit, he later explained, he said the word pit, all of a sudden that pressure that he'd felt on his throat, all of a sudden was released. And his voice came back. And then he was able to get back into ministry and get back into the pastoring. And he even later traveled the country, wrote a book on, his, on what God did and shared that with others. You know, there's something powerful whenever we see a miracle. And I was thinking about it this morning. I think that the most powerful thing is certainly he was blessed. But now I think other people, our faith rises up within us. Well, if God could do that for him, maybe he could do that for me. Yeah. He heals 
all my diseases. Maybe today you need a healing. It may be a physical healing. It may be an emotional healing. It may be a spiritual healing. It may be a a mental healing. It may be a relational healing. It may be a healing you can't even describe. It's just like something's not right. I just need, I need help. I need hope. I need healing. We're going to pray right now. We're going to, we're going to pray. I want you to think of that one thing. There may be more. Think, put in your mind, think of the one thing that you'd love to be healed from. One thing. Think about that for a moment. Everybody got it? Now, how many of you believe God's big enough to do a miracle in where you need a healing? I do too. In a moment, we're going to pray. But the first thing is, if you would like to know for sure that Jesus is your Savior and Lord, and trust Him in your heart, believing that He died on the cross and rose from the grave, the most important healing that we need is our sins are forgiven, and we have Jesus as our Savior and Lord. So if you'll join me and just pray this prayer from your heart to God. Say, Dear God, I realize that I've sinned, and I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross. And for rising from the grave. Come into my heart. And save me. Thank you for giving me. Eternal. And abundant life. Help me to live for you. The rest of my life. In Jesus name.